Hello, uh, this is Wayne Austin. I'm a sales engineer at Sage. I'm on the Sage uh, Fixed Asset Solution. Thanks for joining uh, Sage and E2B, te E2B Technology so that we can go through some of the important aspects surrounding why managing your fixed assets is important to your business. Uh, today what we'll cover is some of the reasons you need uh, fixed asset management solutions. Uh, areas uh, that we'll cover are data in, uh, integrity, disaster recovery, some of the hidden costs uh, surrounding ghost and zombie uh, assets, uh, potential uh, fraud, and I'll also give a brief overview of the solution. So first, let's look at some of the benefits of using uh, a complete fixed asset solution. You're going to be able to manage efficiently uh, your fixed assets through their complete life cycle, which means for those of you that may have uh, recurring projects, starting off with your CIP or work in progress, be able to then put those assets in service, uh, run their depreciation, as well as all the way through transfers or disposals on the back end. Some of the other benefits you'll get out of that, of course, is uh, excellent data integrity, uh, audit prevention, uh, being able to identify uh, fraud or identifying missing assets, such as ghost or zombie assets, and of course, business continuity in the event uh, your particular site is impacted by some type of disaster where your assets are damaged or destroyed. So let's look at a comparison between using our solution versus an Excel spreadsheet, for example. Some of the challenges you'll have with an Excel spreadsheet would be data integrity, um, unable to control access, or limit access. Basically, you can password protect a spreadsheet, but you certainly have no granular uh, controls. There's little or no error detection and no audit trail of who changed what. Of course, as tax rule changes, it'll be quite challenging in getting accurate uh, calculations in an Excel spreadsheet. Our solution provides uh, data integrity that is excellent. Uh, you have granular user access controls where you can limit a variety of functions within the solution as built-in uh, error detection and audit trails. And of course, all of the tax rules are baked in uh, as well as some of the tools uh, included in the solution that will ensure that you are staying in compliance. Ease of handling tax and of course, all of those uh, baked in calculations. So let's look at some of the hidden costs. Uh, first of all, what are ghost and zombie assets? Uh, ghost assets are assets that are lost or stolen or for some other reason unusable, but you're carrying them on the books. Uh, zombie assets are assets that are physically in use, but you have no representation of them uh, in your registry and uh, all of the associated challenges that goes along with that. So let's take a deeper look uh, at ghost assets. So these are on your books, you're paying uh, property taxes, uh, insurance premiums, and it certainly will impact uh, productivity, uh, being able to budget properly uh, for replacing assets that you think you have, uh, but it turns out you do not. So it can certainly have some critical business impacts. On the other side of this, uh, zombie assets. Certainly not a freebie if assets that you have no record of are in service and in use. There are certainly costs uh, associated with that. It's certainly going to impact your compliance as far as uh, property taxes. They are not insured because you don't have them on the books. And there are certainly uh, potential security hazards if uh, there are things uh, showing up in your environment and you don't know where they came from. And you certainly would also have no idea of knowing when those particular items have been uh, stolen or lost because, again, you don't have them uh, on the books. So let's look at some of the impacts uh, financially that you can have uh, from ghost assets. Certainly there's uh, some uh, time that's going to be impacted as far as the time of your staff with trying to identify where your assets are. Uh, not having the productivity associated with those assets that should be in service and being used by your staff and they're not uh, available for use. But there's definitely cost associated with that. Now, if you look at the graphic on the right, that's actually our ROI calculator, which you can access on the Sage Fixed Assets website, where you can actually plug in your own numbers and run your own particular uh, scenario. 
So in this particular scenario, I'm simply using a total cost of all of the fixed assets uh, as $1 million. And I'm using a 15% uh, value uh, as far as an amount of assets that are ghost assets or missing uh, assets, uh, just a simple industry average. And I'm using a remaining value of 40%. That gives you a total cost of your ghost assets at 150,000 and a remaining value of those assets of 60,000. Now, using a maximum federal tax rate of 21%, that translates into 12,600 uh, in potential overpayments. Uh, for state, using 6%, that translates to 3,600. For personal property tax, I'm using 3.4%. And that translates into $2,040. And for insurance, using 0.01%, uh, $1,500 in potential overpayments. So that translates to a first year potential savings of $19,740. <clears throat> so that does translate into real money, real financial impact to your business, not having a proper solution so that you can eliminate uh, ghost assets in your environment. Let's now take a look at the Sage Fix Asset Solution. Our solution, like I said, is a complete uh, life cycle management tool for your fixed asset. <clears throat> the planning module would be used for handling CIP, your depreciation uh, module for handling uh, your depreciation calculations for tax or for books, your tracking module for doing physical inventories, and being able to identify all of the assets you should have that they are where they're supposed to be. There's also uh, custom reporting, which will give you the ability to do ad hoc reports in addition to the standard reports. And I'll go deeper into each of these portions of the solution to provide you a much better understanding of where they would fit in your particular uh, business environment. Let's first take a look at the planning module. So if you have recurring projects or working projects, CIP, for assets that you're going to accumulate additional costs throughout that project and in the end want to be able to send them uh, to the depreciation module to start depreciation, this is where the planning module comes into play. You can track all realized costs associated with your particular projects and be able to actually place those in service uh, at the end of that cycle. That would send them directly to the depreciation module where you can now take full advantage of all of the uh, tax rules. Uh, we have 52 depreciation methods actually baked in. We've added a couple. You also have the ability to do custom depreciation methods uh, should you need that. This asset snapshot, by the way, just gives you a quick overview of what's going on with all of the assets in your company. You can see what's placed in service by quarter. You can see investment by remaining life and even do a quick depreciation comparison looking at acquired value versus accumulated uh, depreciation. <clears throat> there are some great tools built into this to ensure that you stay uh, in compliance and one of those tools is actually an audit advisor. What you're able to do with this audit advisor, you can run this at any time uh, throughout the year so that at year end, you're not scrambling to try and undo some error you've been carrying uh, all year long. It's going to check uh, what you've been doing currently, and you can run this independently for the tax book or financial book, and it is going to check uh, that you are doing things correctly in accordance with the federal tax rules or with GAAP. Any potential issue that it sees uh, is going to generate a red flag. And as you can see in the graphic on the right, next to that red X, it is going to identify anything that is a potential issue that could trigger an audit. It's going to identify the issue. It is also going to recommend a resolution. And it will actually create a group <clears throat> so that any asset triggering that particular uh, issue will be placed in that group so that you can then take uh, corrective action on those specific assets and eliminate that situation. It also has some granular security controls. So if you do not want everyone to be able to, uh, for example, uh, do things such as merging companies, uh, run depreciation, um, set or clear period closes, you can actually create 
uh, multiple profiles and assign users accordingly to limit what those users can do uh, in the systems. There are many standard reports included in the solution, <clears throat> and importantly, uh, especially if you are handling the tax uh, book, being able to generate uh, things such as a 4562, your uh, 4797 sale of property, all of those type reports for tax, including property tax reports, are built into the solution. The tracking module is actually used for doing physical inventories, as I discussed earlier, and this is where you, of course, now have the ability to uh, generate barcodes, uh, put them on those assets, and be able to actually um, complete a physical inventories where you can use either a traditional scanner or an Android uh, app where you can now complete those inventories, reconcile any differences, update any changes uh, for assets. Let's say an asset was found in a different location and be able to send that data back to the tracking software where all of those changes can then be uh, accepted and you can now generate a reconciliation report identifying any assets that were missing or not found during that physical inventory. <clears throat> Custom reporting. Now there are 28 standard reports built into the solution. You can customize the reports within the solution and you can also additionally use uh, an integrated version of SAP Crystal Reports that you can create any type of ad hoc reports you want to looking at any field in the database and so you truly have uh, unlimited reporting capability. Out of the box, <clears throat> the Sage Fix Asset Solution will integrate uh, with our ERP system such as Sage 100 where you can actually launch the Sage Fix Asset module from N Sage 100. Within Sage 100, of course, you can create a visual workflow as I have depicted here where during the accounts payable or purchase order process, you can actually tell it to create assets in the depreciation module. For journal entry, Sage 100 will actually pull that journal entry data directly from the Sage Fix Assets depreciation module, so no need for doing an export and having to import your journal entry into Sage 100. Now I'll take a few moments and show you a brief uh, overview of the fixed asset solution so that you can see the ease of use and some of those built-in tools uh, that I mentioned. Now, the fixed asset solution comes in uh, various uh, versions. There's a standard, standalone, a network standard version, as well as a, pr a premier version, which runs on a SQL Server platforms. The primary differences are going to be multi-user capability in the network and premier uh, versions, as well as capacity. Typically, if you're under 10,000 assets, you can use a standard network version. Uh, if you need significantly more, you can move up to the premier version, which will handle over a million assets per company. <clears throat> the asset snapshot I'm displaying here uh, in the standard network version, you can have this feature turned on so that you can get a quick overview of what's going on with assets overall in the company. And as I stated earlier, you can see what's placed in service by quarter, you can get a total uh, netbook value, a view of all of the assets in the company, and it even breaks it down by what's active, uh, disposed, inactive, or transferred. And you can see this information by any of the books. Of course, you can also look at a quick depreciation comparison, look at your five-year acquisition spend, and even a breakdown of remaining life. <clears throat> There are some great resources built in. Uh, if you go to help what's new and click on learn more, it's going to show you any tax rule changes that are included in this current version. And in this uh, 2019 release that I'm in, we have included changes relating to the Bipartisan Budget Act. We've also added these two new depreciation methods, remaining value mid-month and half year, for those that may need to take advantage of any of the safe harbor rules or any of these tax extension, and of course I can look further back to the sweeping changes last year surrounding bonus depreciation or any of the other changes tied to the Bipartisan Budget Act or the TCJA. 
Now, some of the tools built in uh, for those of you that might be taking advantage of bonus depreciation. Let me go into one of my asset details. And as you can see here, I'm going to go into the tax book. I'm currently using Makers 200 accelerated depreciation, and I'm currently taking 100% bonus. Now, let's say in your scenario, you're currently taking 50% uh, allowance on your assets, and you want to be able to make this change in mass to multiple assets and take advantage of the tax rule change, allowing you to take 100% bonus you can easily do a 168 allowance switch. <clears throat> I can do this to an individual asset, all the assets or any subset of the assets where I can change my bonus percentage from 50% to 100%, or I can even turn bonus off or on for any fiscal, simply identify your fiscal, or I can also, of course, do this for any book. One of the other changes you're able to do in mass quite easily as if you need to do a mid-quarter convention switch, let's say in your scenario you have exceeded 40% of the assets being placed in service in Q4, which under IRS rules you now need to change to a mid-quarter convention, you can do that at the global change as well. You also have the ability to change in mass uh, depreciation methods and estimated life in our bulk edit tool, which will have you acknowledge you've done a complete backup and you can choose any books you want to make changes to, any subset of the assets, and you can change depreciation methods from whatever it is currently to something else. For example, if you needed to take advantage of uh, those tax extenders and use remaining value mid-month or a half year, that would be a scenario you could do that in. You can also, at the same time or separately, change remaining life. So if I wanted to change all of my five-year assets, to some other value, and I'm going to actually use something that's invalid here for the tax book, uh, you can do that as well. <clears throat> now, you can choose to make this effective uh, as of your current depreciation through date. You can certainly go back to the place and service date, and you can even retain any beginning accumulated depreciation info that you may have uh, in place from some prior adjustment that you've done on some assets. It will actually validate it. So if you're trying to make a change that is not in compliance, it will actually generate an error and tell you that. In my particular scenario here, I've created a self-inflicted uh, error. So you can see here, it's going to give me a warning for something that is saying, hey, are you sure you want to do that? In this case, for assets that are fully depreciated in my tax book, I'm actually trying to extend the life. So that's something I probably wouldn't want to do. Now, if you take a look at this other, the next asset, it actually is generating a hard error. And that's because for the tax book, I'm actually trying to use an estimated life of 23 years, which is an invalid estimated life for assets using Maker's Formula 200. So it will look at every asset that will be impacted by the change and identify any potential issue. Things that are correct with no issues, it's simply going to show it as valid and with no problem there, but it will look at each asset. So it's a great tool to help you uh, make changes uh, in mass. Some of the other tabs here I want to point out, your transaction tabs will actually capture things such as uh, disposals or transfers. There's a notes tab. You can include notes about anything you choose, and you can actually attach uh, images, invoices. It will take a variety of file types, so basically if you can scan it, take a picture of it, you can attach it. It will take PDFs, JPEGs, PNG, TIFF files, and so on. And you can even link a single image or invoice to multiple assets. So if you order 20 pieces of equipment on a single invoice, you want to link that invoice to all those assets, you can actually do that quite easily in the system. In my scenario here, I do have an invoice attached and an image of the asset attached. Now, you can have uh, different values. If we start taking a look at our book fields down below here and look at acquisition value, in my particular scenario, I do have the same cost basis across all the books, but you can certainly have different cost basis and different depreciation methods uh, for any of the books. 
you also have the ability to include expensed assets. So if you have a depreciation threshold of 5,000 and anything below that you want to capture as an expensed asset, that way you can still capture that expense spend even though you're not depreciating that asset. And of course, this will handle tangible or intangible assets. You can include real property, uh, land, buildings, and so on, software, uh, amortizable assets, all of those are available in the systems, and you do have multiple straight line methods that you can use, including uh, depreciation methods for ADS depreciation. All of these general information fields at the top here are customizable, so if you want to capture multiple uh, fields, for example, for identifying where the asset is, a location name, room number, floor number, and so on, you can certainly do that department name. Uh, you can certainly capture things like uh, asset classes, of course, your GL account info, and uh, description fields. You can simply rename any of these fields, anything you choose, simply by typing that display name here. If you need to be able to generate a smart list like I have with all of my chart of accounts, you can certainly do that and even restrict entry as well. But when adding any assets in the system, these are your critical depreciation fields and must be populated. So property type, place and service date, acquisition value, depreciation method, and estimated life. You can do uh, transfers of assets between locations. You can do transfers uh, between departments and you can update any information as part of the transfers. You can do full or partial transfers as well as disposals, full or partial. If you take a look at my company settings, I can actually have different fiscal year ends uh, in each book. Short years are supported. I can specify any uh, book overrides I need. It is going to default to a half year convention, but however, you can manually change this to a mid quarter, but there's really no need since you can actually do a global change to a mid quarter convention uh, at a later date. You can also determine here how you want recoveries or adjustments uh, handled, and you can do this uh, either immediate or post-recovery. And let's take a look at some of those reports I mentioned uh, earlier that are built in, in particular these tax reports. So you can actually generate your own 4562, and this will actually generate uh, the worksheet that goes along with it, as well as your actual f fileable 4562. And this will, of course, include both pages. And, of course, the worksheet that goes along with that. You will also more than likely need to run the tax expense report, which will include all of the data needed to reconcile that 4562. We've also now included the 199A report. That's actually new. Let's run it for last year. All of the reports here, just to give you an idea of the layout, you can see there. And now based on the actual uh, tax laws and place and service date, the system certainly will know based on place and service date uh, what you are eligible for using for depreciation methods for any particular assets. Now, one of the other reports you'll probably certainly need is going to be the 4797 worksheet, your sale of property. It's actually going to break this down into the correct property types. And on the second page, you'll actually have your ordinary gain losses. Some of the other important standard reports built in, of course, will be things like your journal entry, your general ledger posting report, 
which you certainly don't have to run it manually in this scenario if you're using uh, Sage 100 or Sage 300, for example, because this data is what will be sent over uh, to Sage 100. In the case of Sage 300, it's pushed out to Sage 300. In the case of Sage 100, Sage 100 actually retrieves this data so that you don't have to do this manually. Depreciation expense is certainly one of the other ones you may need. And you can customize these reports, as I mentioned. I can run the support, change the sort order, sort and subtotal is by asset class, GL asset account, anything I choose. And I certainly can create custom versions of this. So if you take a look here, in white is going to be my standard reports. Everything you see in the yellow is actually a customized version of that report. If I want to go beyond actually changing the sort order of the report and go into custom reporting, I can simply click here where I have in this particular case added current netbook value, which is a column that did not exist in this report, told it to give a sum at the bottom, change the orientation, and you can certainly save changes like that as a custom report and run that report with any additional columns of data you want. So you have tremendous flexibility in how you run these reports. And I'm going to actually run this in standard format just to show you some of the data captured in this depreciation uh, expense report. All of the reports, by the way, are exportable in a variety of formats. So it gives you tremendous flexibility in how uh, you export this. So I ran this depreciation expense report unsorted in standard format. And if you notice here, it will capture your prior depreciation through date, show your current through date so that you know and looking at your depreciation this run column that I'm looking at one month's depreciation. At the very end of this report, it's going to give you all of your grand totals. Now you can sort and subtotal it by asset class or any of the fields as I mentioned earlier, and it would give you a net total for each category and then give you the grand totals at the end. You can certainly uh, run reports such as a disposal report you can run it for any date range you choose, and this is where you'll capture all of your information tied to full or partial disposals and all of your net proceeds, realized gain, loss type info, all on a single report. Net proceeds, realized gain, loss, anything deferred. And you'll certainly have a reports such as a property tax report, And in the case of the property tax report, this is where groups come in handy. So you may want to create groups to define subsets of the assets based on what jurisdiction they're falling in. Uh, you can certainly um, assign a property tax category. If you've got a field defined for that, you can certainly point uh, it to that and run your property tax report, for example, here on just a uh, subset of the asset so that you can easily now have all the information you need for filing uh, those property taxes. There are many other standard reports built into the solution. So certainly, uh, if you want to see some more details or look at your particular scenario, we can set up a custom uh, product demonstration for you where I can walk through the entire solution as it would apply to your particular business needs and we'd then be able to uh, make a determination if the solution really is a great fit for you. So if you do need to get a deeper look at our fixed asset uh, solution, definitely reach out to Angela Harris. Her contact information is displayed here. She can be reached at 404-352-4700, extension 242, and her email address is as displayed here, A Harris at e2btech.com. Thank you for your time today, and we look forward to sharing some more details about our fixed asset solution and how E2B technologies can help you with your business.